Hi guys and welcome to the channel and today we're going to be talking about World of Games new Victory at Sea hardback rulebook. In the previous video we talked briefly sort of talked about the rulebook and showed you a few of the pages and that but I've been, I've been put a message out on that and see if what people were interested in doing a more sort of a closer look at what the content was in actually in the book and a few of you have contacted me in Messenger and also here on YouTube and here it is. This is the video. Now, the video you're about to see of the book was I've already filmed uh, to go alongside with the previous video uh, that we've done. And but I found that the video length was just going to be too long. So I did ask the question, like I said just a second ago, and like, people were interested. So and here we are, the video itself showing you the book. So here we have then, guys, the Victory at Sea by Warlord Games hardback rule book. Oh, let me go briefly go through this rule book with you just so you can get an idea of see what's actually in there um, and also you can sort of like you know get form your own opinions and out of the rule book and that as we go so excuse hands as i'm going through it there's a lovely artwork on the front there i um, really do like that and that's and that's and that's throughout the whole rule book and that's some beautiful artwork there pictures some games going on uh the battle of the atlantic look you know with the sink the bismarck hood going down <laughs> yeah Washington Treaty, that's an interesting read in that, and obviously, um, certainly after the First World War, and that it set the stall out that uh, countries around the world were only allowed to build a certain size uh, in tonnage of certain ships. So, again, you, you like to see your big, heavy battle uh, dreadnoughts and battleships, and that had to be restricted. Um, so, you weren't going to get um, any, any, any sort of um, um, uh, larger sort of big fleets than that the, the, the Royal Navy had and certainly the German Kriegsmarine had it uh, in the First World War. Um, so again that's, that is a very 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 interesting read in that and um, if you don't know much about the, the Washington Treaty you certainly go and have a look into it and that because it's, it is good. And they sort of briefly summarised it here. Um, there you go. The Atlantic Lifeline again it tells you obviously when the UK um, obviously before uh, the Americans came into the war. Obviously we relied a lot on Lend-Lease and food supply and that from America. And obviously with the U-boat threat that was um, was going on in the Atlantic and that. So again, it was, uh, again, it's got quite a little sort of story in that going through there. Mediterranean, which is what I want to focus on and that with Force H and that. Lovely, lovely campaign, obviously throughout the whole of the Med and that. And the Italians, they had a, you look at the Italian fleet, that's some old stuff in there, sort of like sort of late sort of First World War 1920 style ships and that. But a large proportion of their fleet was, was new, it was built in the sort of late 20s and 30s. Very, very good ships and very, very well put together, fast. And then the same with the French Navy. Now, obviously, Churchill gets crit <laughs> criticised for ordering the sinking of the, the, of the French Navy, but the, the, the threat was the French had quite a new navy. Again, if you look at navies around the world, the Royal Navy, if you look at their ships and how they're sort of decked out, a lot of them are cluttered up. And that's because at the time, even the First World War, the Second World War, they they were deemed to be operating all around the world. So they, you couldn't cater for one particular sort of theatre of operation over another. It was, that's where you're going to go and you might be sent to the Med, you might be sent down the Pacific, you might be sent into the Atlantic, etc. So our ships and that, if you look at them and that, they're quite sort of, they are overcrowded, like, you know, with, with equipment and bits and pieces. Whereas the French and the Italian fleets were solely designed if you look at how they are, how sleek they are and everything, designed to cut through the Mediterranean and fight one another. And have, obviously their, their supply bases were quite short, you know, distances apart compared to us traveling around the world. And the same for the Americans and, uh, fleet and that obviously once Pearl Harbor happens, um, they, 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 <laughs> they start rebuilding their ships and they do a fantastic job rebuilding their Navy. And I think, you know, hats off to, to, to the American people for, certainly putting together um, uh, the, the, the Navy back together again. And, a, and likewise with the Japanese, the Japanese were, were very much like the Italians and that. And the French, yes, they had some older ships and a lot of their older ships um, were still in service in the Second World War. And looking into um, their more newer stuff, it was actually, when you look at it, they, they, they sort of tried to copy what the Royal Navy done, trying to cater for this, that and the other. Um, and, and again, they built quite a large fleet, as, 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 as history tells us. Um, but yeah, so the Mediterranean is where I'm going to focus my, my attentions to. And again, they sort of briefly go through the, um, the, 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 the war there, and obviously Greece and Malta, 
campaigns uh, where were the French well again the French were there they still had some ships left um, and they did operate alongside us and luckily um, <laughs> we didn't want them to fall into Vichy France um, hence why we sort of the order was given to sink the French in, the, in port sort of thing you know I mean again don't get me wrong I think you know we can look back in hindsight was it the right decision not the right decision we weren't there at the time the Pacific obviously very very big campaign and I think really <laughs> I think it saw the end of naval combat in 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 ship to ship action. Um, and you look at obviously with the carrier fleets and that. You look at modern navies to today. Even the Royal Navy now, we're we're, we're slowly getting a couple of carriers up together because we recognise the fact that carrier strike forces is is the way to go. So let's take us a long time to do that. <laughs> But um, other people might disagree with that. But I personally think is we we, we needed a bigger strike force. But um, but yeah, so so there we are. Oops, close the camera. I must knock it there. Um, so yeah, so there we are. So that goes through the Pacific, and obviously talks about the kamikaze attacks, carrier operations, obviously, which was very big in the Pacific, and the game rules itself. Now the game rules, from what I can see, is basically what you get in the pamphlet itself. You know, the pamphlet that comes in the starter set, um, and the one that came free with the War Games Illustrated. That seems to flow exactly the same. There doesn't seem to be, what I could, and again, I've only skimmed through it, much differences in there. Um, I'll see the traits and bits and pieces, aircraft, rules. I think what they've done is they might have on some bits elaborated a little bit more or give us a bit more clarification. But other than that, I can't see any big changes in that in there. And obviously now it's your scenario, setting up your war at sea, different types of scenarios. Um, points for the game etc and then the additional rules that ships may have submarine warfare which i think could be quite really interesting and that really looking forward to having a little dabble with that and there we go and then there's some of the scenarios are here that they are convoy escorts look an ambush attack yeah guadalcanal that could be quite a good one for an ambush attack down there uh harbor attack yeah so again, you know, you you certainly got a lot of scope for different styles of games. Uh, kamikaze attacks in this scenarios. There we go. There we go. Coast and shoreline. So again, you have shoreline batteries up there, coastlines. Um, one sort of springs to mind, and that again, if you're going up playing in the Pacific and in the Kamala Canal area, like you know, this uh, the island hopping. It's not the camera again. Apologies for that. Um, again, so that's that's that. So. I'll see the the, uh, the rules for the gun, shore batteries, etc. You know, dice and range armor. Yes, yeah, so that's quite good. And then go fight Battle of the River Plate. These are the pre programmed scenarios, historical scenarios. Battle of the River Plate. I've got the ships to these where Mongoose used to do them and that in, in this scale. So I might hook them out and have a little dummy run and play the game. And we are. There's lots of different sort of um, scenarios and that made up scenarios. Like the Battle of the Denmark Strait, look, you know, the famous Battle of the Bismarck and the and the Hood and Sink the Bismarck. There's a few few scenarios there. Pursuit of the Bismarck and obviously Sink the Bismarck. There we go. Battle of the North Cape. Interesting there. So yeah, there's lots of different things. The the attack on Toronto. You know, who would have thought? Little string bags, uh, fairy swordfish, torpedo bombers, you know, <laughs> will be going in against a sort of a modern fleet it, it, whilst they were in dock doing that. I mean, that's just, you know, crazy, but uh, they, they're, they're heroes, really. Um, but yeah, so it's a, as I said, it's a lovely, lovely book. And I'm just, so just skipping, I'm really skipping through it. I'm saying, do apologies for doing that, but I just sort of try and give you an idea of what it's all about. I'm, I'm conscious that this video is going to be quite long, but um, I just said uh, I wanted to sort of show you this book because I said I think it really is nice, nice, and uh, the way they put it together. And there's such a lot in there. I mean, you know, you you can create your own scenarios. You, you, you know, about a midway look. You know, that'd be quality to do. Um, you know, you can create your own scenarios, but I mean, you'd, you'd spend a month of Sundays and more just playing through the uh, the various campaigns of the uh, program scenarios. So absolutely brilliant as i said I, I i was taken aback with it really and i, I have to be honest um I, I think it's an excellent book 
Right, well, well worth the money. And I'm, I'm normally sceptical on buying these sort of hardback books. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I do think this is very good. Building the fleet, obviously your points cost in bits and pieces. So you've got the Royal Navy. And then in, and in here comes the ship classes and obviously all their stats, what would be their stat cards. So again, you can create your own fleets. If you haven't got the card for them, you know, you can sort of certainly look at these uh, carriers. Uh, and, you know, loads of them. Escort carriers and normal fleet carriers, cruisers from our heavy cruisers, light cruisers. And that is the same through every nation. Um, let's just go through this a bit quicker in a minute. Uh, deal with the British, and destroyers. As I said, we had a massive navy in the Second World War. Same with the first. Um, Ever ships. So sort of support ships, your flower class corvettes and destroyers and, and things like that. Aircraft here, little torpedo boats. So again, for your shoreline attacks and that. US Navy, again, lots of uh, the Colorado, Colorado class just battleships there, look, you know. Absolutely loads. Again, it's lovely artwork in that one there. And as I said, they're the same throughout all, all the Lexington, look, Yorktown. Yeah, what more do you want, eh? Absolutely brilliant. As I said, I'm 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 going through it quick now, but <laughs> destroyers. But look at that. That's a lovely bit of artwork. Oh, that's lovely. Look at that. Ideas of painting as well, with obviously with the camouflage to break up the silhouettes. Um. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Yeah, I like that. But there we are. So it's certainly worth um, going through. And, it, and if you're interested in naval games, but you don't want to go too sort of, I mean, there's a lot of very detailed sets of rules out there. And if you didn't want to go into that, certainly Victory at Sea will give you a fun, you know, the Kriegs Marine, a fun um, game and that would show, you know, Sean Austin, Prince Eugen, look, yeah, that's really good. I, the Shaughness and Eisenhower are a nice, a nice ships actually, nice models. Uh, cruisers. Yeah, it will certainly give you a, a, a representation of World War II naval combat. Um, but definitely really worth investing in the money if, you, if you're wanting to play a game. I mean, the starter set alone comes with the free rules and obviously the cards you get with it. And they give you an idea of other stats and bits and pieces. So again, you've got you have got um, a good starter set there, and I think we want to do some good starter sets to be fair. You know, Japanese destroyers. Yeah, definitely, definitely good. Aussie aircraft, the Italians, the, the Italian fleet. Yeah, so that's some really nice stuff. Very sleek, isn't it? You know, if you look at that, very sleek, isn't it? That's really nice. Yeah, and there we are at the end of the book. That's a counters, reference sheets, bits and pieces, and some for a reading. So there we are, guys. That is the book, uh, Victory at Sea by Warlord Games, Hardback Rule Book, and I hope you enjoy that. So spare with us with the we'll have the outro. So what do you think of that then, guys? Lovely, lovely book Warlord Games has produced here. Uh, I just can't talk about it enough. The, the layout of the book is really nice to look through. Um, I've said I've not really sort of gone into too much details and reading it and that. It's sort of been tied up with, with work and that since this book's come. But I have to say I'm, I'm really, really impressed by it. Um, the, there's some, some names in there, obviously, other than the usual sort of Warlord names you see sort of in their publishing and their sort of um, uh, uh, background writing and, and everything else, the artwork, etc. There is a couple of names in there that you may know of. One is Matthew Sprange, uh, owner of um, Mongoose Publishing. They did the original Victory at Sea rules. And I say he's the author of the book. And there's another name in there you may have heard of, which is David Manley. And again, David Manley's been involved with a lot of naval projects, a lot of naval books and that. And it's, again, I've met him a couple of times in that, and he has got a wealth of knowledge about anything to do with naval. So. Don't know about you guys, but I, I, I'm certainly pleased with this book. And again, you can get it from, from Warlord Direct, uh, Warlord Games, and I'll leave a link in there in the description below for Warlord Games uh, on the page that where you can purchase the book from. And also your friend on local gaming stores and that. I mean, for me, it's in Toyman, Wargaming and, uh, and Supplies, Hobby Supplies. And again, I'll leave a link to the to Toyman's uh, page and that in the link in the description below. So 
if you guys have enjoyed seeing these sort of flip through of these books and that, I do have a couple of other books that have come recently. And if you're interested in seeing more and seeing this style of video, then please get a comment in the description below. Let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts on Victory at Sea. Have you played it? What do you think of it? Um, you know, for me personally, it's a fun game. And I remember playing the original game and that, and I've not really got too much involved with this particular edition yet. But um, as I said, the first edition I enjoy playing. It's not over the top, it's not sort of heavy duty, it's just a fun beer and pretzel style game and that which is what you want really for a bit of a laugh really, especially in these current times. So again, as I said, let us know in the description below if you want to see other books sort of flick throughs and that that I've got recently. And uh, until next time guys, please stay safe and happy wargaming.